So now that we've got our solenoid mounted, we've got all of our hoses and everything ran all the way to the front of the tractor, uh, now it's time to go ahead and start putting the controls on. So what we've got to do is actually take our lever off here and we're going to start by taking this boot off and I'm pretty sure uh, that this thing unscrews and just, just comes out of there. So I'm going to pull this boot off. I'm going to pull it up there far enough to get it out of the way. So it looks like we've got a jam nut right here to lock this thing in place. So I've been working on this thing for, I don't know, a solid hour and I cannot get it to budge. And what the problem is, this thing, the, the lever threads in and then you've got a jam nut on it here to tighten that up to make sure it doesn't come loose and move. Well, the problem is that this is threaded all the way in and the jam nut's in there. And I think that you can't loosen the jam nut any to get the lever loosened up. So I don't, I don't know of any other way to get that loose. I've actually heated this nut and stuff here and tried to get that to expand and loosen up to where I could turn the lever. But I, I can't get any movement out of it whatsoever. And I've got, you know, some good size uh, wrenches and stuff would put lots of leverage on it to turn that. So I'm going to try to cut this nut. Hopefully I can cut this thing off. I don't have to reuse this lever. So if I nick the threads or something, it's not a big deal. That's the only way I can think of to, to try to get this done. I don't, I don't know. I'm having serious trouble with that. All right, so that was pretty much it. I did nick my block just a hair right there while I was cutting that, but that actually got the bolt or the nut to loosen up enough to where I could turn it just enough to get this lever loose. But I have, I mean, that's a 12 inch crescent wrench and I had some serious torque going on that thing and could not get that thing to break loose. And the problem is you can't just put it on the nut and try to break that nut loose because you've got you know, all this assembly attached to the tractor. So you, you have to make sure you hold on to both pieces to try to make sure that you don't bend or break anything here. So that nut, that was just way, way too tight. But now that it's loose, we can just thread our control lever out of here. It actually looks like that I didn't even touch the threads on the lever and they're in really good shape, so I could reuse that if I need to. So the directions say to make a little cut in this edge of the boot right here. And you're gonna cut a couple little slots in there in order for the wires for the new control lever to fit down through. So as you can see there, we've removed that little piece of rubber from our boot and that's actually on the side of the fender uh you know that that matches up to where your wire is going to be on this side of your control lever so you want the wire to go down that side of the boot so we're going to go ahead and run our wires down through our boot
so the instructions I had showed pulling this floor mat loose, but this floor mat's actually connected and there's not a slit in it to be able to slide it loose from uh, the hole here in the floor. So I ended up not taking it loose because I don't want to cut the mat or anything. And I ended up just running the wires and stuff here down the protective nylon cover that's on here. And then the wire loom that goes down through the hole in the floor, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any bare wires and it was actually on the wire loom itself. But it's not tight on this at all. You can push that right away from the edge of that hole real easy because I've actually got everything zip tied and pulled away from it. And then down here on the bottom, this is where it comes through the floor and we've got it running over towards our solenoid and kind of routed right up in here. And there's actually a brace that's right here underneath this. You can go over top of that brace. That way you're not down hanging below anything and then run your plug in up to your tractor plug. And this plug right here was kind of tough to find. It's actually uh, up inside here, doubled over, like it's folded up and then taped around another wire that's up in here. And that was really hard to see. I actually had to take my phone and like shine a light in there and reach back underneath there with my phone and like kind of, kind of look in there. And once I kind of did that, then I took my pocket knife and just reach up in there and you can see there's a little blue piece of tape way up in there and you can cut that piece of tape and then this plug will fall loose. So then you just connect your wiring harness into that. As you can see back there in the back, uh, the relays are now attached to the bracket that is on the back side of the diverter valve or the third function. And you can see that little pigtail hanging down there. Uh, that pigtail, this one, goes to the front of the tractor or the front side of the solenoid. So we've got the pigtail coming off of the valve itself and that's what's gonna plug into your harness back here in the back. And the wire that doesn't have any insulation or doesn't have any, um, doesn't have any wire loom or anything on it, that's gonna to go to the connection at the front of the tractor and there's another wire. If you see, this one has wire loom on it all the way up to the plug. This one actually is gonna go into the pigtail at the back of the tractor or on the back of the solenoid assembly. So we've got everything tidied up. It's tucked in there nice and neat. Uh, it's hard to see actually from the outside, uh, but all the wiring is in there and I've got it zip tied to some solid surfaces and to some existing wiring uh, in fact, actually, this wire right here is actually one that I added for lights on the back of the tractor. And it was already routed through, so since it was coming from the back of the tractor and it was running in the same places pretty much that um, my wiring was that I was doing now, then I went ahead and just ran it on that same wire and then come on up here to where the pigtail was at and I just zip-tied it in here above the fuse box. So like I was saying before, uh, this there's only a couple spots on this that actually are really kind of tough. And now that I know where those trouble spots are at, I could probably install one of these now in less than two hours. The biggest problem was just trying to make decisions on like um, routing the wire. You know, it kind of gives you a vague idea in the instructions, which the instructions aren't real good. It's just really a picture that has a caption on it that says, do it like this. And you know, it, it doesn't give you any details of, of what the picture is. And some of the pictures, you can't really tell what you're looking at. So it made it kind of difficult. And then trying to find the pigtail on the tractor was super tough. It wouldn't like it was just right there in plain sight. And it's actually inside the dash and it's way up in the dash. I ended up having to take my phone and reach underneath there and use the, the camera on it to be able to see kind of like a mirror pretty much. So that's that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I shared and kind of pointed out because it's not just, hey, it's right there in your face and you can just grab it and, and get it out of there. It's, it's a little difficult to find. This project actually was a lot bigger than what I had anticipated. I thought I'd go out there, follow the instructions and I just zip it right together. So that's why I'm sharing this video to hopefully help somebody out and make those instructions make a little bit more sense. 
uh, it, I may not have everything in here. A lot of the, the footage, it was so cloudy and rainy and all that kind of stuff. I hope everything comes out okay. So anyways, I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you leave. Also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get back with you as quickly as I can and answer them as accurately as possible and, and try to help you out as much as I can. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for being with us today, and we'll see you on the next one. I just want to say thanks to Messix for helping me out with this system. Like I say, they actually answered a viewer question on their YouTube channel, and they put me right onto that and what I needed to do. I called them up, ordered the kit. It was actually on back order. Uh, I thought it was going to take a long time to get it, but it actually only ended up taking about four weeks. So I was really happy about that. They got it out to me. Everything was in great condition. They shipped it and had it protected really well so you didn't have to worry about anything happening to it. I've ordered several things from Messix and they always get it out in a timely manner. And you know, they've just been great uh, customer service. And you know, if you, you can call them up and talk to somebody and ask them questions, it's actually really nice to be able to do that and have somebody that you can speak with. I hate to say this, but my local dealer I almost like I dread talking to them because they are so short with you. They won't answer questions for you or they act like they don't have the time to answer questions for you. And you don't get that feeling at all with Messix. I mean, they just, they just do a great job. Thanks a lot to everyone at Messix for just being great to work with.